So James, I understand you have a plan to run seven marathons in the space of seven days. That sounds insane, but it's also for a great cause. So tell me what's going on. Yeah, so um, starting on the 20th of this month, um, I'll do seven marathons consecutively Sunday through to the following Saturday. Um, yeah, it's going to be a challenge. Um, but yeah, like you said, it's for a great cause. My uh, One of my dearest friends, he uh, just under three years ago now was diagnosed um, completely out of the blue with having a, a quite a sizable brain tumour. Um, this was whilst he was still living in Australia. He had the brain tumour removed, but unfortunately the, the, the actual cancerous side of it is um, what's deemed grade three. So it's, it's incurable, it's treatable, but incurable. I'm, I'm so sorry to hear that about, about your friend and I, and I applaud you for what you're, what you're doing. There are so many different ways that people can raise awareness for, for people that or causes that they believe in or, or to, about plights that they're worried about. What made you decide that, um, that this was the avenue for you to get the word out about what he's going through and about brain cancer in general and cancer in general? So through, well, speaking to him, I mean, I speak to him a lot and I have, I have a few friends who have done slightly crazier things, um, <laughs> which is m mental. Um, um, but I actually, I was fairly ignorant about the, 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 regularity of brain cancer is actually the biggest killer in people under 40 which i didn't know beforehand right. um, and then speaking to him like what he has to go through the way he handled it like so positive wanting to just be there for his dad uh, for his son sorry um and like wanting to just live a full life he actually cycled 350 miles two weeks ago now to raise stuff for raise money and awareness for another charity um and wait, wait, wait. so he 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 bicycled for a charity that has nothing to do with what he's facing. Is that right? He did it for brain tumor research. It was a similarly related um, charity, but different to, to the brain tumor charity who I'm doing it for. So, whereas my uh, the brain tumor charity who I'm I'm doing it for are more support for people who have it and their families. So, when Rich was diagnosed, um, the brain tumor charity were there for him and offered him like a community of people who had either had it or were still going through it, but also for their families and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and actually I've had quite a few people from that community reach out to me and offer their help and, and whatever. So it's actually been really quite, quite touching. Um, but then as to why I'm doing this, um, I, I've run a couple of marathons. I've never trained for any. I don't know why a couple of times I just decided I was going to- They do recommend that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I've don't worry, I have trained for this one. Uh, okay. <laughs> this isn't. This is less of a spare of the moment thing. Um, and I've and I listened to a like a couple of podcasts of people who have been pushing themselves, and I wanted to do something a little bit greater than just doing like you know your one marathon or whatever. I wanted to if I was going. My my side of it is I'm going to suffer for a week. It's going to. I obviously understand it's going to be quite. Um, mentally and physically taxing but mm -hmm. what rich goes through on a three-month cycle every three months having to go for these checkups and he was talking about his anxiety of like every three months he gets these checkups and and whatever um i wanted to be able to put myself in a position where i would actually suffer for more than just sort of a day or two mm -hmm. um, and also give myself sort of space to be able to think about why i'm doing it uh, use my I want this to be more a celebration of rich as, as opposed to what I'm doing my, it's just my I'm just using the my platform and what I'm doing is like the vehicle to actually raise awareness and sort of celebrate how rich treats it um, mm -hmm. so I wanted it to be a little more prolonged um, and I also wanted to push myself because I knew I could do one so. and I understand that on the, the last day the last leg of it he's joining you in some capacity yeah so the last day is the Saturday um, Saturday the 26th and We've actually got like a venue booked out. Um, there's going to be 40, 50 people there. His his family are coming down, um, his his parents, his partner, his kids, his aunties and uncles. Um, and he he reached out and said to me that he would like to join in for part of it. Um, so I think he's actually, I think he's going to cycle alongside me on the last day. But like I said, I want it to be a celebration of him mm -hmm. um, and raise awareness for what he's gone through and like, you know, kick up a bit of a fuss because he handled it so positively and with minimal fuss. Mm -hmm. 
and I, I quite would like that day to be he gets a bit of fuss for once yeah a <laughs> little yeah, bit of fuss gonna, for him. he's going to join in I think quite a lot of people are actually going to join in on the last day which would be nice and so tell me a little bit about for those who are sports nuts can we get a little bit into the nitty-gritty of like the, the prep that you've been doing for this because it's it's one thing to do a marathon and another thing to do maybe a couple of marathons but the the toll on physically and mentally for day after day seven marathons in a row that's that takes a bit of you know you know practice and 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 forethought yeah so the training i i've had a coach who's sort of done all my programming um sort of started i mean i had a good level of fitness to start with i always sort of ran a couple of weeks i wouldn't consider myself a keen runner but you know more more out of uh, sort of mental release or anything um so i've done a 12-week training block which the training i think I mean, it's not going to be worse, but I think like the monotony and the boredom of the training can be almost worse. Like when you finish a day at work and then you look at your training program and you've got a 30 kilometer run that evening, you're like, oh, okay, this is a bit of a grind. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You've got it. As somebody, I'm going to interrupt now because as somebody who does not run, I'll do other things. <laughs> what is it about running? Is there, do you, is, does it, do you get into a Zen state? Do you, I mean, is there something kind of hypnotic about it? Please. If you asked me this a few years ago, I would have, I would have said, there's no way you were, well, you would find me ever to do this. Um, I used to despise it to be honest, like, but now I feel more with running. I can get into sort of a, a flow state as such, like almost, I wouldn't say it, <laughs> I wouldn't say it's, um, meditational or whatever meditative but um I can sort of zone out a little bit um I can't listen to music weirdly enough um I, I have to listen to podcasts if I'm going to listen to anything unless it's like the last 10 minutes and then I can chuck on some music um I find with music I end up sort of thinking too much about running hmm. As I don't particularly like it, it makes it worse. <laughs> but, okay, then you have to tell me, is there a particular kind of podcast? Are you like listening to the daily or are you uh, having to do like horror podcasts or I don't know, is there something, a, a genre it's, that works for you for running? It, it, it greatly varies depending on how I'm feeling going into it. Um, if it's, if it's a sort of 45 minute, because there was a lot of days where I was doing two runs in the day. So there was actually a point about two weeks ago, sort of at the height of the intensity of the training, where for, I think it was like 13, 14 days, I did two runs a day, every day. And actually I took a video of myself, which I was about to post um, today, which I found, I completely forgot about. Well, I'm almost like crying because it was just, I was just exhausted. Mm -hmm. um, so the podcast, some would be, more you're sort of not necessarily just Joe Rogan, but that sort of like chat with, you know, mm -hmm. David Bell or some army person, depending on what, if I needed, like, you know, come on, you can do this. You listen to like an old Navy SEAL or whatever. Mm -hmm. If I was like a bit more of a light mood and I was quite happy to like sort of jog along, I'd listen to more like entertaining podcasts, like sports <laughs> things or whatever. But I understand that on top of, okay, so you'll be having, listening to a myriad of, I'm sure you've gotten a, a selection for every day uh, <laughs> lined up for their seven days. But from what I understand, it's not just seven. So it's not just a marathon every day for seven days. You're also trying to get it in under a certain hour, right? You said four hours or less, or am I insane? No, I mean, that's the goal. I want to do all, I want to do all under four hours. And I, the, I, the reason I told people four hours was to sort of keep it accountable. Cause originally I'd sort of said it and in my head and I was like, would like to do the wall under four hours but not told anyone and then I was like oh if I don't tell anyone and it gets to day six I'm just gonna like slide off and I, so so yeah that is the goal I mean I won't be devastated it's not like the main reason I'm doing this it's not um to try and break some stupid record or whatever a little but, bit of accountability yeah a little bit of accountability a little bit of sort of uh inner competitiveness um if I if I if I only like miss by one marathon then I'm gonna be really annoyed <laughs> Um, do you, what is, what does Rich think about all of this when he told him your plan or your, yeah, your plot? Yeah. I actually ran it past him before I'd even thought about it. Like I tried to include him in the conversation all the way through. Um, like I said, I wanted it to be more about him or raising awareness for similar people who are going through similar situations. Um, I actually originally had said like, maybe set up a fund for your kid or whatever, if like the unfortunate happens and he was like absolutely not no I want it to be for this charity they really helped me and my family um 
I think he's pretty grateful. Um, <laughs> we speak we speak pretty free, uh, pretty regularly about it, um, and he's really. I know he's looking forward to coming down on the last day. Um, I just think that would be a nice nice day. To be honest, I can't wait to finish and give him a hug <laughs> and know oh. that I don't have to run anymore. <laughs> Um, well, let me ask you this kind of, you know, kind of to wrap things up. I do want to ask you, like you mentioned, it's, you know, you didn't know about the, the backstory that, you know, brain cancer for people under 40 is, you know, actually hits so many people. And, um, and I know that you are a very healthy person. You take care of yourself. Has this, has this, you know, been an aha moment for you as far as like that kind of stuff, like going and getting checkups? I mean, how has it changed how you deal with your own health? It's made me more aware that, I mean, Rich is fit. He was always he was always a keen sportsman. So it's made me sort of less, I don't want to say cocky as such, but like this can happen to anyone, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't think you can be sort of, oh, it's not going to be me. And that sort of, yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily want to say arrogance, but like that just flippantness is like, you know. Invincibility that we all feel yeah. when we're that young. Yeah, which is funny because actually when I'm doing the training for this, I'm convinced, I'm trying to tell myself I'm invincible because it's the only way I can, can get around. But, but on the serious side of it, it's like, no, you know, yes, being healthy, and I would always advocate being healthy, will minimise the risks of things like cancer coming along, but it doesn't bring it down to zero. Mm -hmm. um, and seeing someone so young get diagnosed and have a young family and something like that has made me a lot more aware of certain life choices. Um, and also, you know, to it, more, it's more on a mental side. Like when I get in a mood or I feel a bit grumpy or a bit, a bit ungrateful about certain things, and then I think like, and then I'll sit, like, I don't know, say it pops up on Instagram, him with his kid, and I'm like, oh my God, James, like, snap out of this. Yeah, it puts yeah. everything in perspective. It really does. And when I, when I see how, especially how he's handled it, and obviously, you know, you can handle it in whatever way suits you best. But when I see him being so positive about things and him ringing up and, and like seeing if I'm all right, mm. like, how's the training? Is everything all right? Like, how's you? And I'm like, oh, hang on, mate. Like, <laughs> this is the wrong way around in this conversation. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it has taken a little bit of that sort of, yeah, I, I don't know if arrogance is the right word, but that sort of, feeling of invincibility away from it and and the biggest thing and I've said this to Rich is it's made me realize how lucky and grateful I am for a lot of things and like the privilege privilege doesn't just come in that sense like to be healthy is privileged you know it is. we talk and about it's so important you have your health when it really when yeah you really realize how it everyone really neglects does. their health until you don't have it and then it's the one thing everybody wants um exactly. and it's weird we sort of we almost a lot of people almost don't value their health. But if you ask any person that's ill or going through something like cancer or whatever, health is number one. Mm -hmm. um, and I think for me, that has put that maybe a little bit more into the forefront of my mind, realizing that, you know, you can't just treat your body as some dumping ground for junk and lack of sleep and mm -hmm. alcohol and whatever all the time. Like it does require some level of care and also to be aware of, your fortune being healthy mm -hmm. um have you thought i mean have you done a uh, have you thought of a like your what you're going to say like neil armstrong on the moon when he when he gets <laughs> puts that first foot on the moon or you'll have done you know seven marathons in seven days you like the first thing that you're going to say when you cross the finish line or to say to rich well i mean has any or is it all just going to be at the spur of the moment i haven't thought about it to be honest i'm, I'm looking forward to giving him a hug telling him i love him and probably sitting down having a pint <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the perfect finish uh, for seven <laughs> marathons and well deserved. Yeah. James, thank you so much for taking the time. Good luck. I will keep be keeping an eye out, and of course, we'll be donating. So thank you so much. Always, no thank you so much. Really appreciate your time.